There was a scary breach of security at Amazon that left an eerie sense of loneliness inside of Twitch.tv. What's really spooky is how inaccurate those streamer earnings numbers are. Oh, XQC had a pretty good month. Nick Merckx makes how much per year? Pokemon, damn you. The earnings numbers on these blood-soaked scrolls is incredibly inaccurate, and I'm gonna tell you why. Most of these streamers make a lot more, by the way. But moreover than that, I'm gonna explain tombstone by tombstone why there should be less conversation about how much your favorite streamer is making and more about the general cybersecurity over there at Twitch, whether you're a streamer or even a viewer. Then I'm gonna finish up by giving you some tips to lock down your account before your stream key and credit card information gets sent six feet deep in the soil. Ooh, that intro chilled me right down to the spine. An anonymous hacker slashed his way into the core root files of Twitch, basically its data structure, how the website is actually ran, and took a huge portion of those files. How big? Take a look, ladies, 125 gigs, thick-ass file, and uploaded that to 4chan. And these files are now literally available for public download. Not what Amazon would like to be seeing right now, but anyone can go in there and start digging through these directories, these root files, and figuring out what is in there. And by the way, what is in there is a lot of stuff. The streamer earnings numbers, which by the way, we're gonna cover aren't even accurate, is literally the most minuscule part of this leak. And this is incredibly interesting. The primary reason or purpose of this hack taking place was to quote, and this is a quote from the anonymous hacker, foster more disruption and competition in the online video streaming space because their community, i.e. Amazon's Twitch, is a disgusting, toxic, cesspool. So there's been a huge negative spotlight on Twitch as a whole, as a platform here recently because of things like gambling streams, things like hot tub streams, things like hot tub streamers getting multiple strikes for the same thing without being banned, while other streamers can literally make infractions on TOS and get perma banned. Things like what Amazon did to Guy Beam or Dr. Disrespect as you might know him by. Basically banishing him off the platform, granted he may be in the wrong on that, we still don't know. But I did cover about a month ago that he feels wronged enough and that he is in the right enough to be quote unquote suing the shit out of Twitch. And I could go on. They are the most greedy when it comes to how they treat their content creators, taking more, asking more, and giving less. And it seems like this hacker is literally trying to make the competition look a little bit better. The hey, there's YouTube Live and there's Facebook Gaming. Granted, <laughs> Facebook just had a huge hack as well that occurred just yesterday. So there's security breaches happening on all these platforms. Well, how deep does it go, Kevin? Well, bust out your shovel and let's get to digging here because it goes quite deep, ladies, much like your boy here. So some of the files that were actually leaked here. The entirety, I like this word right here, the entirety of Twitch's source code with history going back to its early beginnings. And yes, I can confirm that this does go all the way back to the era of Justin.tv before Twitch was rebranded. Creator payout reports from so 2019 and onward, mobile, desktop, and console Twitch clients, a list of all the users that have Twitch installed on their game consoles, on their computers, desktops or laptops, and then of course on their cell phones or tablets with the Twitch mobile app. Proprietary SDKs and internal AWS services used by Twitch. Every other property that Twitch owns, including IGDB and CurseForge. And this is absolutely huge right here. And again, this warrants its own, let me go ahead and zoom in on my skull for this one here. This warrants its own video, it deserves that, and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and give it that. But in this video, I'm gonna skim over everything that this leak did indeed release to the public, but I'm gonna primarily focus on the streaming income numbers since that's what everybody's hyped up about. I guess people didn't realize how much online entertainers made and some people are saying it should be more. And most people are saying, wow, that is way too much. And I'm gonna explain how those numbers are simply inaccurate. But this is big, thick, veiny, and girthy. An unreleased Steam competitor codenamed Vapor from Amazon Game Studio. So another game launcher, another PC game launcher to compete with Steam. Go ahead and clear up room on your SSD now. I know you got the Activision Blizzard launcher. You probably got the Epic Games launcher. You might have CD CD Projekt launcher. Uh, of course you got Steam, uh, but now you need to go ahead and clear up a little space on that hard drive for Vapor when that comes out. Jeepers. Th this is a fun one. Good for a quick knee slapper or a side splitter. Twitch internal red teaming, which is basically their cybersecurity team that purposely tries to look for vulnerab vulnerabilities by trying to hack into their infrastructure, playing offense or the aggressor, trying to do things like pin testing or pin penetration testing, their firewalls, designed to improve security by having staff pretend to be hackers. Well, that did a beautiful job. 
So I'm going to make separate videos going over specific topics over each of these specific leaks within this major leak. So for example, I'm going to be making an entire video going into detail about what we know about Vapor, the Steam competitor. I'm going to go over the leak of the source code and how that basically means that everything that makes Twitch Twitch, so how its chat box works, to how its gifted subs works, to how things pop up on screen when you donate. Those are all available for competitors now, Facebook Gaming, YouTube, which I'm sure Google and Facebook aren't going to bank on this, but some little janky, shady, third-party programmed in the mom's basement streaming platform that's trying to get up and running now has access to all this source code shows exactly how Twitch, the website, is ran as a streaming platform. That deserves a separate video, and it's going to get it. But but how much does your favorite streamer make? Because you saw those numbers, they were they were big. They were in the millions. You don't need a leak to find out about how much a streamer is making. You can get a general idea of the baseline of the minimum, the floor of how much they're making by finding out how much they get from their subs. Now, how you would do that is first of all, Twitch generally for its partners and affiliates is going to take a 50-50 split between Amazon and you, the content creator, when you're getting paid out for your subs. This is in comparison to Google or YouTube taking 30% and leaving the streamer 70% and currently Facebook not taking anything out of its subs. Now, according to Deserto over here, streamers can negotiate for a more favorable split. And if we come down here to this dropdown, you are gonna see that Harris Heller did point out that if a Twitch streamer maintains an average of 1,000 subs for a couple of months, you are able to renegotiate your subscriber split with your representative that is assigned to you as a partner from Twitch. I've been maintaining a pretty hefty audience, uh, a solid viewership, a good community here on Twitch. I'd like to renegotiate my subscriber split. And then at which point they'll most likely tell you to go fuck yourself. However, if they look at your numbers and they're like, wow, you are earning us a lot of money, then they might consider awarding you a more favorable split. But as a general rule of thumb, all these major streamers have their sub count public. So you can see how many subs they have. So let's say they have 300,000 subs. You can multiply that by $2.50 if they're getting a 50% split. However, most of these major streamers like XQC and Pokimane and Nick Merckx most likely have negotiated for a much higher percentage of their subs. Not to mention, that doesn't really break down what tier of subs these are. There are different tiers of membership, of paid membership to a channel, or in this case, a streamer. Plus, here's the big one that I hope people get, but if they don't, I'm gonna go ahead and break it down right now. The earnings numbers from 2019 and 20 that were leaked and are public record now that people are up in arms about, streamers have basically came out and said, what, well, that was incorrect for me. All but one or two streamers said that the estimated number that was shown to the public is actually lower, that they make substantially more than that. There were a couple streamers that said, shoot, I wish I made 10 million a year. I, I make a lot of money, but I'm not there yet. How about that Twitch league? I mean, I don't give a f about that. Uh, it was wrong for my number though. I'll say that. It says I earn $10 million per year. I do not earn $10 million per year. I do make a lot of money. And that is the truth. Um, I do believe, even though this has been leaked, that I am still contractually obligated to keep my exact amounts private. So I'm not going to confirm which, which, what lists are accurate or if they even are. But what I will say is that there is a big list going around with astronomically high numbers for creators. And that list is not accurate. I do not make $10 million per year. That being said, there is a reason for the last few years that I have been telling you, please don't need to, you do not need to sub to this channel. There is a reason that I have taken all of my PayPal tips down and give them all to my mod team. There is a reason that I pay my mod team. In some cases, I have numerous mods on my channel that are working for me as their full-time positions. Just keep in mind that the top list is not accurate, um, but I am very well off. I incredibly appreciate your support and all of this stuff I've been saying over the years, there is a reason for that. I'm, I'm talking to Twitch and I'm kind of trying to say, you know, now that all this is out there, can we, can I talk about this more? And obviously we haven't heard back because this all happened last night, but uh, it would be nice to be able to be a bit more transparent with all this stuff outside of me just telling you, please stop giving me money. And I, I hope to be able to in the future and I will as soon as I get the word that I can be. Obviously the amounts that I'm making today, I have not been making over the years. In fact, I went almost a year not barely being able to pay my bills with Twitch, um, which was which was tough. So being where we are now is 
pretty freaking incredible. And I do want to thank everybody who's been here for that journey and, and made it all possible. But here's the thing, Stallions. That number was literally just payouts directly from Amazon, which is only from two sources of income from streaming. And that would be your subs, which again, we have no idea if these are a 50-50 split or a 70-30 split and what tier of subs the majority of their subs are. For example, off top, I do remember that Nick Merckx has the most tier three subs out of any streamer, which thus makes him one of the highest earning on the platform. And then also payouts for ad revenue. So those annoying ads that you have to sit through unless you're subscribed to that streamer. That does not take into account donations, bits, sponsorships, not to mention most of these streamers, practically every single one of them, also has a YouTube channel that has hundreds of thousands, if not a million plus subscribers and gets hundreds of thousands of views on each video, which I can attest to will earn you ad revenue. Plus, I'm sure you have some affiliate market links in the description and whatnot. So they have monetization from their YouTube as well. But again, even on Twitch, you know, the gaming chair they're sitting in probably has a sponsorship with them. You know, every once in a while I lean over and you see that logo. That's some cash right there. Maybe I have a stack of G Fuel canisters behind me. You think those are just for decoration? No, that's a contractual agreement that I have those in the background of my stream and I get thrown a couple of shekels every month from my sponsor. I have a sponsorship from Spirit, the Halloween store, and that's how I was able to get all these decorations for free and basically mention to you guys that's where I got these decorations. That is just an example. I actually paid for all these out of pocket myself. But do you see what I'm saying? Sponsorships. So even if those numbers were accurate, which again, several streamers, which I will play a couple of clips, mentioned that those, those aren't accurate. Um, those are literally just from ad revenue and subs. And again, the subs number can't really be accurate. And even if it was, that doesn't take into account the donations you're constantly getting throughout streams, the bits you're getting thrown, which in case you guys don't know what bits are, they are a fictitious or fictional currency where you take US dollars or whatever your real fiat currency is and convert it into Amazon Twitch's imaginary currency to cheer your streamer on stream when he does a 360 no scope. Uh, same thing with Facebook has stars and YouTube has super chats and super stickers. It's the same damn shit. And then again, affiliate market programs like Amazon Associates and AIM controllers and stuff like that. Huge source of income. And then you also have sponsorships. So paid sponsorships to run 30 second pre-roll ads in your videos. Or if you are a Twitch streamer, just to have a certain decoration in your room behind you. Yeah. So again, those numbers are not accurate. And for the majority of these streamers, they're actually making substantially more than the already astronomically huge number that was shown to all of us. Let's look at a couple of them now. Just to go ahead and drill this point home. That was graphic. So I don't think it should really come as any surprise that the top streamers and top YouTubers make a shitload of money. Why is that not surprising? Well, for a couple of key factors. First of all, again, they are the top. So we're looking at the tippy top here. We're looking at the exception, not the rule. Secondly, we're talking about the entertainment industry. If you look at musicians and actors and professional sports athletes, they get paid astronomical amounts of money too. And what is YouTube and live streaming on something like Twitch? Online entertainment, which is a great opportunity for advertisers to reach people's audiences. So whether it's fair or moral or just that some guy on the internet with a microphone in front of his suck hole and a controller in his grubby greasy mitts should be making more than a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, an infantry grunt on the front lines protecting our country. That's a conversation I encourage you to have amongst your friends and whatnot. And then from there, we could branch this off into a lot of little sub conversations like how much money Twitch streamers actually donate. For example, Dr. Lupo setting up, organizing and raising over $1 million for St. Jude's Children's Hospital in one stream. Nick Merckx is now paying for these annual, soon to be biannual, major blowout barbecue events that he throws for his viewership to come hang out with their families and stuff. What that shows is that obviously they're making enough money to give a substantial portion of money back to whatever they're passionate about, whether that's veterans with PTSD or that's children with brain cancer or that's your personal community, your stallions and stallionettes out there or your MFAM if you're Nick or the Tatman Army if you're Tim. Being able to give back to your community that made your financial position possible. But these numbers aren't accurate. They should be treated as a baseline or a floor of what these streamers are most likely earning. But finishing this video out on a more important note for you and I, because we ain't making those millions right now, but what we are doing is getting our, our tukuses slapped around from Twitch's security. So one thing to note right now is that this is literally just the beginning, as the hacker said that this is part one. 
There is more information that either has been data mined or will be in the near future and will be available for download on 4chan. Since this is part one and these intrusions are going to continue to happen on Amazon's site until they tighten up their cybersecurity team a bit, here's a couple of things that I recommend you do immediately. Whether you are a viewer or a streamer, I would recommend you go into your account right now and change your password, especially because if you are using the same password for Twitch as you do for your bank and for your email and everything else, that is going to make it a very smooth transition for a hacker to take that one password and get into all your accounts. So I would recommend changing your password. I would also recommend turning 2FA or two-factor authentication on. And for all websites or applications that offer something like the Google Authenticator app or some kind of an encrypted application that refreshes a unique code every 30 to 60 seconds, I recommend using that over SMS or text message as that is quite vulnerable and quite easy to crack into. Next up, this is for my streamers, as I know a large portion of my audience are people that YouTube and stream or are looking into getting onto these platforms, I would recommend that you change your stream key. But I'm gonna make it easy for you stallions, as I always try to do. These articles will be cited or sourced in the description below, as I do anytime I cover any news in the gaming community or industry. And this particular article from videogameschronicle.com does have step-by-step -step instructions on how to turn on two-factor authentication. So that is honestly my best advice for you stallions and stallionists is to go ahead and change your passwords to something different than you have on other platforms, engage 2FA, and make sure it is not SMS or text. Use something like the Google Authenticator app. It is a lot more secure. If you are a streamer, go ahead and refresh or change your stream key. I know it's a pain in the ass because then you need to plug it into OBS or Streamlabs OBS in the settings and whatnot. Trust me, I changed my stream key. And as I alluded to earlier in this video, I will be making separate videos for each of these specific topics, such as their new Steam competition, Vapor, such as the fact their source code has been leaked. And what this means is that basically a Twitch-like replica website could be built. But as far as how much income the top streamers on the platform make, yeah, it's a lot. More than we even saw with those numbers. If you stallions and stallionettes enjoy this video, mash your hoof on the like button. That helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming peripheral reviews. And I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily. And if you're into spooky shit, as you can probably tell from the backdrop in the room, as well as my overlays, things are going to get a little bit spooky around here. I'm going to be doing a lot of Halloween themed content in the very near future. Peace.